The mathematical analysis of stacks of cannonballs and of spheres in general has its roots in a question posed by Sir Walter Raleigh, favourite of Queen Elizabeth I, explorer, introducer of the potato and tobacco to Britain, and part-time pirate on the high seas. Raleigh asked his mathematical assistant, Thomas Harriot, how he could quickly figure out the number of cannonballs in a square pyramidal stack. In other words, given how many cannonballs ran along the side of the bottom layer, how could the total number of cannonballs in the stack be figured out without having to count them individually? Harriet solved this problem without difficulty. If k is the number of cannonballs along the side of the bottom layer, the number of cannonballs in the pyramid, n, is equal to 1 over 6k times 1 plus k times 1 plus 2k. For example, if k equals 7, n equals 140. A more specific form of the cannonball problem asks, what is the smallest number of balls that can first be laid out on the ground as an n by n square, then piled into a square pyramid k balls high? In other words, what is the smallest square number that is also a square pyramidal number? The answer is the smallest solution to the Diophantine equation 1 over 6k times 1 plus k times 1 plus 2k equals n squared and turns out to be k equals 24 and n equals 70, which corresponds to 4,900 cannonballs. The ultimate form of the cannonball problem is to ask if there are any other larger solutions. In 1875, Edouard Luca conjectured that there weren't, and in 1918, G.N. Watson proved that Luca was right. Returning to Elizabethan times, Thomas Harriot's interest in spheres extended far beyond piles of cannonballs. Harriot was an atomist in the classical Greek sense, and believe that understanding how spheres packed together was crucial to understanding how the basic constituents of nature are arranged. Harriet also carried out numerous experiments in optics and was far ahead of his time in this field. So when, in 1609, Johann Kepler wanted some advice on how to give his own theories on optics a stronger scientific underpinning, who better to turn to than the Englishman? Harriet supplied Kepler with important data on the behaviour of light rays passing through glass, but he also stimulated the Germans' interest in the sphere packing problem. In response, Kepler published a little booklet titled The Six Cornered Snowflake, 1611, that would influence the science of crystallography for the next two centuries, and that contained what has come to be known as Kepler's conjecture about the most efficient way to pack spheres.